Shalom Chavrim. Uh, again, we're seeing anti-Semitism on the rise everywhere. It seems like on a daily basis, anti-Semitism is just constantly showing its face across the globe, across the country, and around the world. Uh, just yesterday, uh, we find that on the Temple Mount, the uh, Muslims that were up there, the Palestinian uh, Muslims there, were, were toting around a picture of Hitler. Uh, and of course, there, there was also another article that came out where they had captured them on on audio as well, saying that soon that the uh, Palestinians will once again not only have a state, but they will they will there will no longer exist a Jewish state. Uh, so the intentions of the Palestinian people are to completely to annihilate and to eliminate the Jewish people. There's so many things that I can't that I constantly think of as I hear such rhetoric that is going on, and uh, it's just it's appalling. And of course, tonight we'll be on uh, radio. Uh, excuse me, <clears throat> it's Blog Talk Radio, and uh, I am I, uh, uh, Jason was kind enough to post a link to, of this to my. Uh, to my Facebook page, I did a share for you guys, those of you that are on the Facebook there. Uh, I will also try to upload this real quickly on our on our website, if you're not on our Facebook page, to IsraelReturns.com, uh, so that you can see that. Yes, it's called Zionism is Biblical, uh, with Pastor Paul Begley and Rabbi Danun. Uh, this is the, 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 the post that I have on here that's from Jason. Uh, there and that is on Blog Talk Radio and that and it's Revelation News Radio I believe is the actual program there but I'll put the link also besides Facebook I'll try to post that up on uh, on our website Israel Returns as well here in just a little bit so you'll have that to be able to to to, to take a look at what's going on we'll be talking about the DNA research that is uh, a book by Tex Mars where he speaks of. DNA research shows that the Ashkenazi Jews are actually Khazars. Uh, there is a lot of evidence that also refutes that evidence, even since that evidence, uh, DNA research came out that we'll be bringing up in the show, as well as I would like to talk about the anti-Semitic rise, uh, and, it, and it's more of a soft anti-Semitism that I'm seeing uh, that is coming out of a lot of Christian people that are saying that Israel is really not <clears throat> a true Jewish nation. It is only the Rothschilds, uh, it's Zionist, and that it's not really biblically a biblical mandate. And I've taken a look at a lot of the scriptures that the brothers uh, and sisters that, 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 that have gotten involved in this are using out there, and I think you're going to be surprised at some of the responses uh, that will come back and, and will discuss the biblical uh, um, the scriptures that are being used here and how that it's really just taken out of context to begin with and, and not so much just out of context it's little it's simple things and just to share with you a simple one there uh, that I happened to see when I was looking at this today and that is where the scripture reads and it's actually in more than one place we find this in Zechariah especially but we, we also see it in uh, Leviticus where it says all the families uh, what, speaking of, of Israel, that they would come back to the homeland, that God would regather them again. And it's taken as a literal that every family would return to the homeland, would be repented and, and actually come back. But that's actually not what the scripture is speaking of. If you look at it in Zechariah as well, when it says the, the house of Nathan and the house of David and their families apart and their wives apart, it is showing that Israel will no longer know their tribal order. That's actually what that speaks of. So when it says all the families, in other words, there will be a remnant of each one of the tribes that are there, but they're only known by family names at this point here. Like you might be from the Levi family, you might be from the, the Cohen family, you might be from the Danun family or the Binun family or, or whatever it may be, Netanyahu family. These are the families. We don't know our tribal order. And so therefore, this is why the scripture, in, in fact, excitingly so, it's very accurate of our condition that we would be in at that time. Uh, another thing that I find that's very fascinating is that how that in some cases there, uh, a dear brother, Rob Skiba, who also promotes this type of uh, thinking here, uh, states that the, the biblical mandate for returning would be as it was back during the times when Israel first came out of Egypt and they went in. 
it kind of leads you to believe that they were all believers. But anybody that knows anything about the Torah knows that everyone that came out of Egypt, uh, 1.2 million, one, it was a mixed multitude. Secondly, only two of them really believed. <laughs> you know, Caleb and Joshua were the only two that actually went into the promised land after a 40-year journey, and God killed off most everybody else because of unbelief. Uh, a lot of things there that we, we really overlook, and even the children that went in there, God was so angry at, at one point that he wanted to wipe off everybody and start over completely. So it still comes down to a remnant, and it's a remnant for the sake of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, so we're going to go into a lot of things like that tonight. I hope you tune in. It's going to be 9 o'clock Eastern Time, Blog Talk Radio, Revelation News Radio, I believe is the, the actual title we look at. Look at us up at uh, look us up on IsraelReturns.com. I'll post a link there here in just a few minutes, as well as if you, my Facebook page, Stephen Denoon. It's on a lot of other Facebook pages. It's been spreading like wildfire about this meeting tonight. Uh, I, I really look forward to getting to speak with Paul Bagley. I've never actually got to speak with him before, so it would be a pleasure to be able to speak with him, work with him here as well, because I'm so uh, happy and excited that he stands with Israel as well. God bless you. Look forward to it. Standing in sense, stand against anti-Semitism. I beg of you. Israel needs you more than ever before. Pray for our people. And there's just not enough that could be said. Uh, oh, and by the way, one other point. Let me mention real quick. <clears throat> I had a little bit of criticism uh, out there, quite a bit actually, for speaking about wearing a tzitzit. Let me say this, though, to you brothers out there, and uh, maybe if there's any sisters as well that may have uh, thought that that's something that we shouldn't do. I'm not saying that you have to do this as keeping a law. I was asking you to do it as a symbolic gesture. But keep in mind, 29 years later, after uh, Yeshua had died, rose again, Paul was actually keeping traditions and customs. Uh, a lot of the, the Judaic laws were kept by him as well. And he did many of those in honor of the children of Israel. Even in the millennium, the Feast of Tabernacles will be kept. So when we think that the law is done away with, even Jesus himself, Yeshua, said, I did not come to do away with the law, but to manifest the law, to fulfill the law. So I'm not, I'm not so much in for the Gentile people for keeping laws and customs and things of that nature. Just as I've said to you before, the kippah is it's a Talmudic custom. It is not, it's not a Torah custom. But I wear one when I speak because of the sake of my own people, that I may gain them. As Paul said, he became all things to all men, saving that he might win some. And that's my exact stand as well. So God bless you. I hope to see you tonight. Baruch Hashem.